joined from Beijing by Victor Gao. He's a current affairs commentator and is also the chairman of the China Energy Security Institute. Victor, thanks again for joining us. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Victor, China has pledged to invest $250 billion in Latin America over the next 10 years. Why has China decided to make such a significant commitment to Latin America at the same time that growth back home in China is slowing down? Well, first of all, you may have heard that China now is very busy with the so-called One Belt, One Road initiative, which is very much of a Eurasian concept. However, the Eurasian concept is not exclusive to the Chinese growth stories at present. And I would say that Africa as well as Latin America are very much in the prominent position as far as this China-led uh, growth initiatives are concerned. Between China and Latin America, even though the distance separating them is great, uh, there is actually high complementarity in the economies of China versus the Latin American countries. Uh, you may know that many Latin American countries actually export lots of minerals and resources to China. China is a big importer of lots of uh, grains from uh, Latin American countries. And also, being the largest economy measured by PPP, China is in a position very rare among all the other countries in providing a kind of a total solution. It's a one-stop uh, package, mm -hmm. providing capital investment, a demand for the products, as well as manufacturing capabilities and technical know-how, etc. So, with China's uh, track record of transforming its economy over a period of 36 years, China also brings a level of confidence to many Latin American countries that if China can do this over this period of time, many of the Latin American countries can do the same if they can get their acts together and if they can really focus on economic development. Right. China is certainly leading the way in terms of an example for emerging economies. And, Victor, one of the highlights of this visit is the proposed agreement on a cross-Andes railway which would link Brazil's Atlantic coast to Peru's Pacific coast. Now, what would China's role in this be, and why would this be beneficial to China? Well, you may know that after the opening up of the Panama Canal, uh, there has not been a lot of thinking or uh, large investments in the kind of a pan-Latin American uh, growth development model as a whole. Uh, therefore, the countries on the Latin American landmass are working more or less separately. And I would say that linking the Atlantic coast of the Latin American landmass with the Pacific coast makes a lot of sense because, first of all, the Panama Canal itself is not sufficient. And sometimes, if you can transport goods through railways or even highways uh, between the two coasts of the uh, Latin American landmass from the Pacific back to the Atlantic coast, that actually makes a lot of sense. Therefore, I would say this proposal to build up this infrastructure connectivity between the Atlantic coast and the Pacific coast or the Latin American landmass will enable many countries, including landlocked Latin American countries, to really emancipate their productivity and make their goods and services much more valuable when they have easy right. access to uh, the coast ports for ultimate export to the ultimate uh, destinations in the Asia-Pacific region. Both China and Latin American countries will benefit hugely from this infrastructure well, initiative. Well, Victor, one of, the, one of the traditional relationships between Latin America and China has been one surrounding commodities and uh, exports of commodities. Now, with a slowdown in uh, the Chinese economy, that has hurt the commodity exporters. Beyond commodities and infrastructure, what other potential is there for bilateral trade between China and these four countries in Latin America that make up 57 percent, in fact, of uh, China's trade with Latin America? Well, first of all, the slowing down of the economic growth in China is more or less in line with the slowing down of the global economy. 
However, I don't think the global economy will stay at this low level forever. Therefore, I actually am very optimistic that once the global economy, especially the recovery in the United States, in European countries, eventually pick up, the Chinese growth rate will pick up in tandem. And uh, uh, even though at a low 7 percent for the GDP growth in China, this is still the highest growth rate, the most robust growth rate in uh, China compared with the other major developed countries. Uh, so therefore, I'm actually not that pessimistic about the medium term and the long term growth rate for China. Now, between China and Latin America, as I mentioned, China actually can provide a total solution, one shop package. But also, I would say, if you go to Latin American countries, there is a huge need for manufacturing capacities. And I think in this particular sense, now that China has actually an overcapacity of manufacturing, uh, this is a good time for China and many Latin American countries to cooperate so that China can really help itself, but also, more importantly, help their Latin American counterparts in helping them to beef up their manufacturing capacities. In China, we have an old saying, without industry, you really cannot create wealth. So this is the time that with the Chinese help, Latin American people and countries can really beef up their manufacturing capacity and create many jobs, good jobs too, in their countries. Certainly a lot of synergies and uh, much progress will happen on this trip. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Victor Gao, current Thank affairs you. commentator. It's an honor to Thank be you. here. And, and chairman of the China Energy Security Institute.